Hi again. So in this third and final um, section to learn how to generate random numbers in a controlled uh, form is to run discrete event simulation. And what that means is that our generated numbers are not floating point numbers. They are not decimal place numbers. They are, uh, should we put it, discrete symbols. All right, so um, here's an example. We may have some values to generate, example 4, 5, and 6. Uh, uh, 4 occurs twice as likely as 5 and 6, so 50% of the time. And 5 and 6, they occur 25% of the time. So how do we get a bunch of 4s, 5s, and 6, right? And no 3, no 2, no 1s, because this is the particular situation because it's four days, five days, and six days uh, kind of intervals, and no other intervals are relevant. So if that's the case, it is discrete, because we cannot use formulas to divide and times, because that will result in decimal places being generated inherently. What are we supposed to do then, right? So uh, <clears throat> remember our first method for generating random numbers depend on Excel's built-in functions. Second way, uh, we derive our own formula if Excel doesn't have inverse function support. But the third way is that we definitely will not have any support because it's our own um, values and symbols. It can be four, five, and six. It could be that you are writing a mobile game and you need to generate a bunch of, um, uh, you know, attack uh, missiles you know, or, or projectiles uh, that the monster will be throwing at the gamer. All right. Now, if you write a game, you don't want the monster to be always throwing spears. All the time spears at regular intervals. That will be a game for oh, 10 minutes and, and very soon gamer will give up because it's too predictable, it's not fun, there is no randomness. Now what happens if you, all, if you have uh, 10,000 different kinds of weapons that the monster may throw at the game? That's, that's not a fun game because it's just too many combinations for a gamer to become pro and it becomes discouraging right so you want maybe sufficient variety of let's say four different varieties of projectiles that the monster can throw at a gamer and you want um random uh projectiles to be thrown at gamer it's not always spheres it can be stone it can be other two other different kinds of, um, you know, damage causing uh, projectiles to be thrown at the gamer. And the gamer must uh, defend accordingly, but uh, that is the fun, right? So you have four, you have variety, and you have um, finite variety so that it is able to let people master uh, given enough time. Uh, so there is the kind of uh, excitement about the game. So you see, the success and failure of a game actually depends on how well you program the randomness don't you think yeah and we can also control the timing the interval but we already saw that we can use exponential distribution so we are able to randomly generate the intervals between which the monster will throw uh, projectiles at the gamer but what kind of projectiles right out of the four and this is where we are looking at the third kind of ways of generating random sequences uh, discrete event simulation by the word event, it just means a value, the, the given set of values. So in my four, five, six example, uh, an event is production of a four or a five or a six. Yeah. But in my gamer example, it will be, should I throw spear, stone, uh, what's next? Um, um, boulder, a larger stone, and uh, well, what's what's a huge one? Rock. Okay, so it's... So how do we generate random values that involve uh, defined sets of symbols? Answer to that, in Excel at least, is to use VLOOKUP. Okay? Now you might have learned of VLOOKUP in various data processing or Excel training kind of situations. And typically you'll be taught that VLOOKUP is to do a lookup, right? So it's a bit like a dictionary lookup. What I'm going to ask you to do is to re-look at VLOOKUP, okay, the pun intended, uh, as a form of inverse CDF. Okay, now it, it, it's not quite right 
I'm abusing the language a bit, but it is consistent and it's useful to think of VLOOKUP as a form of inverse CDF for our discrete event simulation. Remember, because once we have clearly defined our inverse CDF, we will be able to generate uh, random symbols. Okay? So now the cumulative table here is basically a dictionary that defines our allowed symbol. So in our uh, in our in my four five six example case, that will show four, five, and six, and the relevant cumulative probabilities. Right in my uh, for example the gamer example the the mobile game example, uh, I will have to define the four symbols right to and their corresponding uh, rate of occurrence. So again, it's in terms of cumulative probabilities. And the comma two comma one will always be fixed so long as you're using VLOOKUP for simulation. Okay, so uh, we'll see, we'll look at the details when we flip over to the Excel screen. Just don't want to flip back and forth. So here's a, an example, right? So uh, we see that we have defined the VLOOKUP table here. And uh, the way VLOOKUP behaves, we always start with zero. Okay, some of you might be thinking, why do we start with zero, right? Where's the one? I thought cumulative probabilities always end with one, right? And that's true, but the way VLOOKUP is programmed, we, uh, or it expects a table to start with zero. And because one is uh, anything that's greater than 0.75, we will not have to worry about it, okay? So uh, it's always going to be ending at one, and so we don't need to define one. So just keep in mind that uh, for VLOOKUP, when you use it for simulation in Excel, always comma two, comma one. And the table that we define always starts with zero. And we don't have to have one. Okay, So that's the nature of it. And when we run this VLOOKUP sequence, we'll be able to get four, six, five, five, you know, in some random order. But it's always a bunch of fours, fives, and six. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, Earlier on, I did say that, uh, where is it? Oh, here, the idea is five occurs 50% of the time. How do I know? Because 7, 0.75 minus 0.25. Actually, is the other way around. Okay, uh, let me just uh, switch over. <clears throat> okay, so the other way around, uh, in the sense that uh, we are normally given that 4, right, will, uh, the input to our question, to our simulation question, is that the input is 4 occurs 25% of the time. 5 occurs 50% of the time. And 7, uh, sorry, 6 occurs 25% of the time. So as a probability definition, it is correct because they add up to 1. See that? Let me just uh, enlarge the screen a little bit. Yeah. So it adds up to one and it's correct. And we like now to look at the CDF. Well, before that, let me just um, show that as a probability distribution. So this is my X. My X can only have values four, five, and six. And the probabilities are uh, basically 0.25. Point five and point two five. Okay, so so the heights will show the probabilities, and we need to convert this into a into a uh, CDF in the same way, almost the same way as we did in our continuous distribution function. So x again. And we have four, five, and six, right? So we keep adding up the probabilities on the left. So from minus infinity until four, we get zero point five, including four, we get zero point two five. Um, minus infinity until five, we get point two five plus point five, and so we get point seven five. Right? Minus infinity, infinity until four, five, and six. Until six, we get of course one, and so we end at here. All right, so here this is one, this is 0 0.75, and this is 0 0.25.
Okay. And the idea is that when we randomly generate a number using rand between 0 to 1, we are basically randomly selecting a height. So just like the laser beam shooting uh, from the y-axis to the CDF curve and then dropping down, it is similar in the sense that we randomly pick a height, let's say 0 0.54. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere around here. We shoot a laser beam. It hits the wall of 5 and then drops down and therefore we get a 5. So then we say 0 0.54 uh, gives rise to a 5 being generated. Let's try another number. What do you have? Uh, 0 0.82. Okay, good. So 0 0.82 we get here uh, and it goes from y-axis to the CDF curve, which is kind of like a staircase. Right, and it hits the wall and it drops down and you get the number 6. I kind of uh, jut it a bit more to the right just to be sure that it is 6 not 5. Right? So we get 0. Point, uh, what did we say? 8, 2 and we get 6. All right. And if we get 0. 0.13 for example, then it is here and uh, immediately it kind of hits the wall and it drops down and we get 4. So 0. 0.13 we get 4. Can see that? Right, so uh, this is basically the idea behind uh, the thinking. But when we implement in VLOOKUP, all right, uh, we are going to port this or program this into Excel, and there will just be a little bit of uh, Excel's idiosyncrasies that we need to observe. But that's about it. Okay. So let's flip back to our Excel. 